Hello and welcome to a session of strategies in quantitative section. Now, in order to form a strategy, let's first understand the quantitative section. You have 30 questions and 70 minutes to answer that. So on an average, 2 minutes 20 seconds per question. That's a lot of time. If you go back and look at paper based test when CAT was happening, the number of questions and number of minutes, the ratio was opposite. Let's look at the current scenario. However, the, the time is much more, but there is still a big catch. Let's understand it. First of all, out of the 30 questions, close to 20 to 21 questions are from the quantitative part and the rest 9 to 10 questions are from the DI part. Breaking down the quantitative part, 4 to 5 questions are from geometry, another 4 to 5 questions are from arithmetic, another 4 to 5 from algebra and the last set of 4 to 5 questions are from modern mathematics which is nothing but inequalities, functions, set theory, log. Now it is evenly spread across the 4 which is geometry, algebra, arithmetics and modern maths. This make up the 20 to 21 questions of the quantitative part. What about the DI part? Now the DI part has 4 sets. Now these sets are normally what? 3 questions, 3 questions, 2 questions and 2 questions. That make up 10. So this is slightly tweaked but in all there are 4 sets. What is important in this section is you have to skim through the section. You cannot just rush into the first question and then go on. The second thing is to identify what exactly is the toughness of the question. A question might be easy. Now how do you identify an easy question? Now in a question there are two things. One is logic, the second is the method. Now if you understand the logic behind the question, it will be easy to solve it. And if you can still have the method also in place, then it's easier. So if you have the logic and the method clear after looking at the question, you can say it is an easy question. If you have the logic but don't know the method, then it is a slightly tough question. And if you don't know either, then it becomes a slightly tougher question. This however is just one way of identifying. There are many more ways. Some people however look at a completely different way. They look at the topics. Now if there is a logarithm question, they would say okay it's a tough question. Need not be. If it's a numbers question, it's an easy question. That again need not be. So you have to read the entire question understand the question and then decide whether it's an easy, moderate or tough question. Now this is very very important. So outrightly you should look at all the 30 questions and then probably do a, use a mark which is given there to identify the easy questions and then go ahead. Now in a quant section typically there are 11 to 12 easy questions out of the 20-21 questions. So 11 to 12 easy in quant. In DI however 8 questions normally are easy. Now easy does not mean they are very very simple. The toughness or the, uh, the main thing in DI is the calculation. So it requires a lot of calculation. So you have to be very very clear in DI that calculation has to be there. You can't avoid it. What exactly happens in an easy questions? Normally you take one and a half to two minutes to solve an easy question. Of course you can take slightly lesser if you are better in calculation. But on an average one and a half to two minutes is what it takes to solve an easy question. Even the difficult questions are nowhere close to the difficulty level of 2006-7 CAT. So please understand that the difficulty is not there, but it's all in the mind and the approach that you take. Let's look at the other side of the story, the tough questions. In quant, there are normally 4 to 5 tough questions and these tough questions take 6 to 8 minutes to solve it, of course for a normal person. In case of DI, Typically there is one tough question which is either highly calculative or tricky to find out. But how do we go ahead? If I look, 30 questions are there. If you attempt 80% of the questions, which is 24 questions, with an accuracy of 85%. Now this will give you 20 correct questions. So 24 questions you've attempted with an accuracy of 85%, which is somewhere around 20 point something. But let's take 20 questions, you've got it right four questions you've got it wrong. This will fetch you a 98 percentile in that section normally. So even after doing all of this, if I attempt only 24 and get 20 right, I'm able to clear the cutoff of almost all the colleges, mostly. How do we get this? Is it that simple? Now we have some strategies to pull in here. What should be the ideal strategy? Some people take up quant first and then they take up DI. That again 
can be reversed. So they can take up di first and they can take up quant. This can be used as a strategy but is not actually the most efficient strategy. The better strategy would be to skim through the paper, identify the easy questions, easy based on the, the questions that you know the logic as well as the method. So identify the easy questions. In the first round of skimming, you finish off the easy questions. Now these will be typically 12 to 13 questions out of the entire 30. So you're done with 12 to 13 questions in the first round of all the easy questions. Then you go back, start again or start reverse. Ideally, you should start back from the start because the last question you've already seen. So you have some uh, thought process behind it. Let's go back to the beginning, start over again. So close to 17 to 18 questions are left. You again select close to eight questions in the second round. So you're done with 20 questions almost, attempting 20 questions. Now you again go back, start again. So you attempt four to five questions in the third round. Now this leaves you with an attempt of around 24, 23 or 25. This is a good enough attempt. If you maintain the accuracy, which can only be done by identifying the right questions and by avoiding your prejudice, which is a numbers is easy. So let me invest. A lot of people have this emotional connect with certain topics. Please avoid it. Such emotional connects may lead you to investing 10, 15 minutes in a question and getting you nowhere. There are obviously some questions there possibly maybe on the easier topic or on the tougher topic. But the challenge is to avoid such questions. So if you can avoid those questions, which are typically the speed breakers, you can get very easily 24 questions in the 70 minutes allotted. Follow this, practice this over a period of time. It is not that just one test you go through and you break everything. You have to practice it over probably 10, 15 tests and then you get it right. Sectional tests are also very helpful in practicing the strategy. Go ahead, do that and apply it. All the best.